This is a story called The Pink Bath. My holiday in Spain had been wonderful. Two weeks, I can hardly believe it, two whole weeks lying in the sun. Well, not all the time, of course. It does get dark at night, as well you know. But as soon as the yellow disc appeared over the horizon, I was there, stripped off in my speedos, soaking up the rays. Ah, but the tan. Such a lovely colour. Not a blister, not a burn. Just an even milk chocolate brown. The envy of the swimming club, I'm sure. Their eyes will be affixed, uh, not to my trim lithe figure as I climb the ladder and take position on the diving board, but to the lustre of my skin, the tone, the shade, the beautiful summer colour of luxuriant living. I'd been admiring myself in the full-length mirror while the water splashed, filling the bath. Back in Blighty, with the grim grey clouds and the damp drizzle and the exaggerated cold climate of autumn, my bronze physique seemed more wholesome than ever. I radiated health. In some odd way I felt that I could open the curtains and stand naked on the windowsill at the strike of midnight and illuminate the world with my iridescent tan. Of course I wouldn't do that, it would wake up the neighbours and blind them as I slept, as they slept. Yes, I was full of myself and the amazing colour transformation. I could hardly say that I was a lily-white block of chalk before I set foot in the southern Spanish sunshine, but I astonished myself how quickly I baked, uh, to no ill effect in the blistering heat. But boy, oh boy, was it worth it. I do not possess a shower and prefer to repose in a steamy pool of shimmering water. I neither use soap or salts and allow the heat to disinfect my body and the water to cleanse it. Uh, one always looks a little pinkish when stepping out from the steamy liquid, the blood rushing to the surface to cool you down, so I didn't give my lighter shade that much attention. It's funny really, I thought that I would sleep badly the first night back in the old rickety bed, the cold air seeping through the leaky window, but I'd gone out like a light and not stirred at all. It was still dark in the morning, although nearly eight o'clock, and I was already dressed before I gave myself a cursory glance in the mirror before skipping breakfast and bundling myself out the door and heading to work. I didn't twig either after the couple of comments that I'd received from regular commuters on the bus that I have a nodding acquaintance with, asking if I was all right and had I been off sick. No, I assured them, no, I'm as right as rain. In fact, I'm just back from my holidays from abroad. They shut up after that. I think jealousy got the better of them. Anyway, they kept themselves to themselves, although I was aware of some furtive looks in my direction from time to time. But it was my secretary at the office that made me hunt out the mirror in the gents. You look a bit peaky, she uttered upon my arrival. Peaky? I was pink. Bright pink. Almost illuminous pink. Pinker than peaks, pinker than cherry blossom, pinker than a flamingo. The tan, the beautiful bronze Spanish tan carefully acquired after hours of lying semi-naked on lilos, deck chairs, outstretched towels and oiled up and left a sizzle in the near fierce heat of the tropics, had evaporated and in its place I had turned into a lobster. But not blotchy like sunburn, no, more like a covering in bright sugary icing. I'd become akin to a pink sugar mouse, like found in confectionery shops. You better go home and wash yourself, my boss said as soon as he clapped eyes on me. We can't have a blancmange wandering about the building, it'll put the customers off. But it didn't wash off. In fact, the more I bathed, the pinker the skin became. I had fears that I was, by some strange metamorphosis, turning into a pig. I hid myself for a week, 
fearing going out into the world and having names thrown at me. A neighbour did my shopping and popped in for a cuppa from time to time to keep me sane and advised me on my increasing pinkiness. But nothing changed. And then I got my water bill. The baths that I was having and all the washing and scrubbing, well, it was astronomically expensive and I relented and fitted a shower unit. The plumber brought all the bits required, the cubicle, the curtain, the new taps and so forth. Well, I don't know why you've ordered pink. You should have got the unit brown, he said once he'd fitted the damn thing. Brown, why? I asked, after he demonstrated that the shower worked correctly. Well, to match the bathtub, of course. I frowned. Well, it does match the bathtub. It's pink, like me. But when I stared at the tub, I realised something that I hadn't been aware of before. In fact, the bath was no longer pink, as it had been for the last 20 years since I bought it. But it had now become brown, a deep brown, in fact, a bronzed brown, just like my skin had been in the Spanish sunshine only a few weeks ago when I had been happy to lie in it all day long.